Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. This is uh, conversation number seven, I think, in our series of conversations with data practitioners. And uh, of course, our series is called Making Data Science Work, which is all about the elements of, of what it takes to, to get data working in production uh, with all of its messiness and complexities. And uh, today's conversation, very interestingly, is now starting to focus on some of the things that you might have otherwise considered at the periphery, but something that is becoming extremely relevant very, very quickly. So this is around privacy law and data product design. And so in a few months, India will be passing the GDPR equivalent law, which is PDP or the Personal Data Protection Bill. And uh, so data science teams obviously tend to be the most extensive users, users of data and their work impacts, uh, impacts these organizations at a huge scale. And it's, this starts to raise a number of different questions. So uh, we're very glad to have with us today Srinidhi Srinivasan and Shivangi Nadkarni. Let me introduce them. So Srinidhi is a senior associate at Ikigai Law working in the policy and regulatory teams. She advises clients on compliance with the IT Act and India's upcoming PDP law, and also on policy positions and strategies in data governance, cloud computing, and cybersecurity. She previously worked at the Vidhi Center for Legal Policy, advising government ministries and regulators on issues related to the, to the digital economy. She also spent a year at, as research faculty at the Georgia Tech Scheller College of Business, and she holds a master's in law from Columbia Law School, where she focused her program on privacy and technology. So very, very relevant. And uh, Shivangi is the co-founder and CEO of ARKA. That's A-R-R-K-A. -A. She has over 24 years of experience in the domains of information security and risk management, e-commerce, and networking across multiple geographies. She has earlier worked with organizations like Wipro and City, handling a variety of roles and heading different lines of business. She was instrumental in setting up the first licensed certifying authority in India in association with Parisine. She has authored the Privacy Book of Knowledge for, data, for DSCI, for the DCPP certification program. And she's a regular speaker, writer, and faculty at various forums and programs. Shivangi has a bachelor's degree in electrical and electronics engineering from Bitspilani and a master's degree in management from IIM Calcutta. So we're about to get started, and uh, I'd just like to give a shout out to HasGeek and Fifth Elephant, under whose umbrella uh, we're being able to bring you this series of conversations. And of course, Venkata and I are from Scribble Data. We are an ML feature store company focused on helping businesses do feature engineering in a streamlined and, and fairly accelerated and trustable way. With that, I'd love to get started. Um, welcome, everybody. And uh, so a question to, to Srinidhi and Shivangi to, to kick us off. Both of you are on mute, by the way. Why is this conversation timely right now? PDP has been brewing for a while. Why are, why, where are we feeling the fire now? What's changed? Sure. Uh, thank you so much, Indra. Thank you for organizing this and for having me here. And let me just start by saying we've been having these conversations on the data protection law in you know, different silos, especially in the policy circle. So I'm very happy to be here with the sort of data science and product community, which will actually have to implement a lot of these changes. Mm -hmm. um, so like you said, there is, PDP has been brewing for a couple of years. Uh, this version of the bill that is currently in parliament was introduced last December. And it had been uh, referred to a parliamentary committee. So it's being currently vetted by a parliamentary committee. Um, the committee was actually expected to submit its recommendations now towards the around the monsoon session. But that somewhat got sidelined because of COVID. But things seem to have picked up pace again. Uh, they've had they've held depositions with you know industry associations and other uh, private players, a couple of other sort of government folk also deposing before the committee uh, on on what needs to change, what are the key concerns with the bill, uh, what it should look like, how it will impact the industry, all of those things. So it, it is expected to, like things have picked up steam on that front and it is expected to pick up pace. Things do seem to be going back on track now. Um, and and so the, the bill is, you know, a fairly comprehensive, detailed data protection law, which is expected to significantly affect the way businesses collect and handle uh, data about individuals. So if it were to pass in the near future, which, which is likely to happen, I mean, either this year or the next, um, you know, there, there'll be a very short uptake period for businesses to adjust and align themselves to that law and sort of, there are a fairly comprehensive sort of obligations, uh, both structural, behavioral changes, there may be changes needed to UI, UX, to product design, to back-end tech architecture, just on legal internal processes, 
involvement of different uh, teams and players within an organization so there will be a whole bunch of organizational changes that are required so it's somewhat you know it's very important to sort of start having these conversations now around what needs to change so that businesses can be better prepared uh, just as a reference point also the gdpr which was notified in 2016 gave its gave companies two years to comply it came into force only in 2018 may but even then it seemed like that wasn't enough of a lead time uh, a lot of businesses did seem to be grappling sort of the week before it was going to be enforced on what all other universe of changes that we are required to make internally uh, you know can our product models even even fly under the new gdpr regime so all of these are questions that require a fair degree of lead time and thought to be gone into um and i i know i know shivangi can speak to a lot of sort of the compliance uh, perspective on how long does it typically take to even uh, comply with even an information security program takes a while so privacy would strike at just the core of data processing operations um yeah so i think i'll stop there so that shivangi can also jump in uh thanks shrinidhi and um, thanks indrayu and venkata for organizing this itself and thanks for inviting me um i think uh, stick uh, adding to what uh, shrinidhi said um i think it is already late i mean on, honestly i don't think uh, you know we have the luxury of time anymore uh, sure the indian uh, bill is around the corner let's say you know it doesn't happen for another uh, year also okay even then i think every other country has a law and uh, most organizations maybe they started the journey with gdpr because gdpr sort of shook everybody thanks to the penalties but i think uh, every other country we are the last country in the world to of our you know size and uh, you know relevance in the global scheme of things to actually think of uh, i mean bring out our law right now given that and uh, arka uh, focuses on actually implementation so we have a fair idea of the kind of challenges that are faced on the ground and somewhere we you know seen that curve also sort of happen and we realize that in the beginning you know people first of all there is a uh, there is a need for what i call uh, you know conceptual clarity and contextual familiarity to be associated with privacy most people first of all think it's a security problem right so then they have this a bit of a moment where they realize that hey it's not a security problem this is a completely different problem by itself then they then there is a phase where people realize hey this is like hitting at the core the way uh, shrinidhi talked about where there is in you know sometimes it goes into an existential sort of thing because organizations are oriented towards not ever questioning the kind of data they collect and process they are only oriented towards saying what do i do with this data to maximize value out of it right now here is coming a paradigm which is forcing people to say you know question why are we collecting data are we really using it for what it is supposed to be used for and are we you know deleting it after that problems which nobody's thought about now this goes back to the core so the first initial uh, push back that we typically get from business teams is that ke hey, hamara to aap log dhanda band kar doge you know so that wrong perception it starts from there and then you have this big journey of trying to sort of you know then start complying the other misconception that is there is that you know this is just a law so hey you know what my legal team will give me a checklist and i just have to tick off on maybe you know 25 different things and i'm done it is not you know it it goes back to actually the hitting at the core which means that you go back to questioning and reprogramming and resetting some very core processes and very core uh, you know infrastructure and applications that drive your business today which means that you it is not something which will get done in couple of years sure if you're a small company of 100 200 maybe 500 people you will probably do it in a year or so but any large organization or you know enterprise is looking at a 3 to 4 year horizon so let's get that perspective and i think that is very important for most of us to understand when i uh, i i gave a uh, talk um, a couple of months back on the implication architectural implication of some of the provisions in the pdp law and i was accused of uh, being uh, very uh, what uh, stopping all data science and all uh, all data work uh, because the the provisions are 
so um, broad i mean forget me for example applies to pretty much all data that you have uh, in your organization if you don't even know where they where the data is you you got a challenge right to begin with uh, before that um, uh, before we further jump in shriniti can can you just briefly introduce the the top level um, the entities and the concepts that are there in the law so that uh, all the audience is on the same page as the rest of us just a quick uh, it's not a substitute for a full sure. reading of the law just enough to be able to follow the discussion sure sure i think the starting point is you know who does this even apply to um, essentially this extends to all businesses that collect store or use or process which is a fairly widely defined term it includes any element to do with uh, data which 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 handle personal data personal data is you know data about individuals or which can be traced back to individuals so it will include your obvious identifiers like name address phone numbers contact details but also in direct identifiers like unique device ids or ip addresses um or even references that can be traced back to an individual so if you say you ex- likes to buy a certain brand of shoes that is inferred personal data which is also within the scope of this law so any business that essentially handles this kind of data is covered which is you know practically every business that interacts with a user um, and there are a range of obligations then associated with data use um so the entities that are implicated again are there's this there's this i won't go into too much detail i think because that that will my that might side step the whole side line the whole conversation but you know there are data fiduciaries who define how who define the entire basis for processing this is why we are collecting and processing the data all of those decisions to do with data are taken by data fiduciaries um and there are data processors which will be your third party vendors typically who are processing data on behalf of these data fiduciaries um and a range of obligations apply to data fiduciaries and there's a core set of uh, data protection principles which are reflected in almost you know every other regime in the world like purpose specification or data minimization or privacy by design or individual participation uh just just a couple of examples that i could give you are you know purpose specification would be when you collect and process personal data it has to be for very clearly defined purposes that are communicated to the user at the time of collection if you have an over broad purpose like say simply saying research might not work anymore data minimization is you have to think about whether you need a particular piece of data or not for the pro- for the purpose of which you are processing it so if you're building say a payments app you really need microphone permission Um, or if you can make do with pin code do you really need location data so a lot of like i mean these are very top level examples i think if you dig deeper there'll be so much more so much more which strikes at the core and i think everything that 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 everything that is being operationalized is through consent so all your data processing has to be on the basis of user consent and historically you know organizations have tended to rely on a broad catch all agreement to the terms and conditions or privacy policies that might not work anymore if it has to be because the law says that the consent has to be clear and specific so and and more sort of standards are laid out on what that looks like which will require you knowing essentially your entire data life cycle and being able to map that out and making sure that each part of the journey is supported by consent or some other legal basis for processing there are also individual rights so individuals should have the ability to access that data correct it if needed if they they might want you to tell you who who you shared it with uh they can ask for that there are data portability rights as well if i want to shift my entire social graph from one social media platform to the other i should be able to do that under the law um and essentially like every business also has to have a privacy by design policy which is a construct which essentially says that you've embedded privacy into every part of your business or product design so at each stage of the data life cycle you've thought about user privacy and you are able to demonstrate that if you are a business category which is called significant data fiduciary if you process a large volume of data or even if you process data which has some specific i mean which has a potential for significant risk of harm all these concepts will be further sort of distilled it's all fairly new conversation around what is risk of harm uh, you can if you're classified as a significant business or significant data fiduciary you may have to do data and protection impact assessments you'll have to appoint a data protection officer have your data practices audited so these are just a couple of broad sort of this is who it applies to and broad obligations that one needs to watch out for and yeah these can require fairly large scale changes to internal processes in the way a business collects and holds data so it sounds like a lot of doom and gloom 
for a number of these companies who have so far i mean you know we've matured up to a point where we are able to use this data but i i see one silver lining and tell me if if i am going uh going awry here but if the rest of the world has already if the rest of the developed world has already adopted these standards for us to have level footing with them it seems like this is only going to be uh, this is a minimum requirement but also something that signals credibility once we go through the pain of this this journey it will signal credibility to uh, partners customers um, anybody that we do business with in 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 the eu in the us am i right about that this helps put us on a on a good playing field yeah yeah no definitely i think credibility and reputational risk also i mean outside of the law there is also value in sort of thinking through compliance from the lens of privacy and 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 you know building that trust with users because at the end of the day i think people are also becoming somewhat more aware about privacy and you know data protection and the way that businesses are holding their and using their data at the back end especially if there's a data breach and it's found that the company had really abysmal data practices even in the absence of any express legal mandate that severely can hit a company's reputation right that reflects poorly on uh, on just customer relations as well um you know i can one example that comes to mind is there was this uh, hotel group in the us which uh, which had three separate instances of breaches data breaches or hacks over a few years and uh, us doesn't have a federal data privacy law they have a regulator the ftc which looks at certain instances of data breaches uh, but but yeah they were subject to intense regulatory scrutiny after that and just the costs of uh responding to those requests for information responding to the lawsuits that in itself was such a significant time and resource uh, sort of training exercise for them if they had had yeah. better processes uh, perhaps they'd have been in a better situation yeah um shivangi you want to add something to this yeah in fact i think it is uh, you know in addition to what uh, uh, shivangi just said uh i think it's just smart business moving forward you know if you want to play on the global uh, uh, you know scene you have to be a privacy smart organization in whatever you offer you know um instead of being reactive and you know then putting in bolting in stuff later it makes sense to be proactive uh, people look at apple right apple is using it as their uh, positioning pivot uh, and things are literally changing so if you take any sector uh, you take the marketing and the mar- you know the whole ad tech cycle is going through a complete upheaval and sometimes you know it is like it happens literally overnight so um the the browser saying not supporting third party cookies uh, it the implications are tremendous or apple saying that they are going to you know restrict the use of that uh, id apple uh, the advertising id has far reaching implications and suddenly you know it's like the the carpet is pulled off from under your feet so it makes sense to therefore be proactive and sort of prepare for it in fact at an anecdotal level a lot of the enquiries that we get are actually what are called emergency enquiries and i feel that their emergency is man- sort of manufactured because you know they would have uh, there the, there are entities who are talking to a client they go through the whole hassle of a sales process and then they finally reach a stage where they think they've closed the deal and then hey suddenly there is you know the compliance group which says but you're not compliant with the basic privacy requirements and then it suddenly sets them back by several months because they think that okay this is something which i can just go and you know get done in a month's time it doesn't happen so it just is just makes smart business sense to be prepared and prepare now uh, if you want to play in the global scene so as shindi said forget the legal compliance bit i feel it's just the you know what i call tail wagging the dog the most important thing is do it for your business yeah and and just on this thread of sort of global operations eu for instance now has you know the gdpr which is fairly stringent so if it's an indian business which is transacting with an eu business like contractually in any case there will be a whole bunch of privacy compliance obligations that you are because the, their data controllers have to pass on those obligations to contractors as well and europe has a stringent adequacy regime so they can't transfer data outside of europe unless there are certain protections in place um there is this whole thing about the eu us privacy shield where data transfers between the two countries have now 
come to somewhat of a standstill because because of uh, because yeah it was struck down by a court in the in Europe saying that there aren't adequate protections in the US so similarly with India as well without uh, without those baseline protections just being a global participant in these data transactions becomes all the more challenging we saw in our own business right uh, we touch a lot of uh, we do data preparation for machine learning and recently we uh, added a a customer from mauritius their first question even before they knew anything about our product was uh, you know are you going to be compliant right um, so this is the the seconding the point that shivangi said that there is a broad convergence as far as uh, across the legal jurisdictions about uh, data protection now there are minor differences uh, between them but broadly at a principal uh, level there is uh, there is a broad agreement so it makes sense for us companies cannot escape this anymore right um, this is no longer about uh, finding loopholes and uh, or setting aside some amount of money to to pay a, pay a fine or anything i remember that uh, as recently as about 3 or 4 years ago there were companies in the bay area who were touting the fact that the data that they held um was now uh, an item on their uh, asset asset list right it was in from an accounting principles perspective they could actually assign a value to it and i'm thinking right now that if those same companies don't have the processes tools and mechanisms by which to be compliant with these things that same data can start to become a liability you hold all of this but you don't have this the, the kind of safeguards and the guardrails that one would need um i i can see the the you know the serious risk that that company holds from a um uh, if you uh, i was to to ask uh, shivani about this if you look at the impact of this uh, law on the life of a data engineer or a data scientist or a data product uh, owner um how do you see the the processes uh, and the the program management aspects of it how do you see this uh, uh, change do you see uh, privacy as an add on to an existing program or you know privacy by design has to be uh, something that has to be part of the dna of the product design itself um good question see you may start off by uh, what i call doing the quick fixes because you're trying to comply but i think in the longer term privacy by design is absolutely necessary so if you take a step back and look at where does uh, privacy impact data as such right so there are three layers so first is trying to figure out this whole data classification bit and how do you incorporate it into all your uh, data in the organization so you have you know what we call personal data sensitive personal data critical personal data uh, then you have uh, children's data and every law sort of slices and dices it in different ways right so you have to accommodate for that because uh, you know you may uh, whether you're needing to comply with one law or you're needing to comply with 25 laws simultaneously right so you need to be at some point build it into the design because you can't keep applying bandaid and dealing with this right uh, the second is this whole thing around uh, what i call purpose so uh, you know we just talked about purpose being actually the pivot right so you use uh, what you collect and use the data for is uh, whether you're sticking to the purpose for which you have got consent or any other sort of okay from the end user right now to ensure that at the data level what are the kind of controls and mechanisms and processes and the architecture that you build to be able to support that because it's one thing to have it in your policy it's one thing to put it up on your website to say that hey i will use your data only for these purposes but how do you actually translate it downstream right into uh, into your actual business operations and the data scientists have a very critical role to play over there uh, and uh, the third is uh, you know a use case a specific use case in the purpose scenario which i wanted to bring up because 
about analytics we talk so much about ai ml uh, one fear uh, of i would say apprehension that a lot of and there's a lot of discussion around this is that uh, you know you collect data for a specific purpose or, or and you know commit to uh, the usage of a specific purpose but you know running it through your traditional uh, uh, you know all your uh, algorithms can actually create a new purpose by itself so how do you then marry that new purpose that has emerged with the original purpose and how do you track it and balance the whole uh, you know uh, fairness and uh, associated with that and that's something which uh, i don't know if there are answers but one needs to think and figure it out because it's not a trivial problem to deal with right um, and third is also i feel we need to look at data architectures itself right given that you have different laws in different formats around the world how do you how does it impact your architecture so that you are able to comply with different laws in different uh, you know sort of ways without having to go back to the drawing board at every single time you come back, come up with a new law that you want to uh, comply with so i would say there's a lot of thinking to be done first you know throwing up the problem statements themselves and then being able to figure out solutions for that and i think it has to be done at a community level i don't think individuals will uh, will be able to it needs all our intelligence to be put together for many of us absolutely i can i can see the the whole model development process itself uh, changing i can see significant education component uh, one other thing that i see uh, developing in the ecosystem is uh, the ikigai's of the world which are actually uh, in some sense providing some guidance on or providing guardrails for this uh, whole thing because uh, engineers can't always uh, interpret the legalese where we like precision but most a lot of the words are very very broad uh, for example you know uh, erasure what does what does it mean uh, so uh, shrinidhi how do you see the the ecosystem developing in terms of the different players who will help achieve this overall compliance with the uh, with this uh, law yeah i think i i echo what shivangi also said and what, what you've just pointed out there are so many sort of different aspects to this there are the legal teams there are the product business teams all of whom are sort of involved in this conversation around data just in terms of so from from our and also we've started having a lot of these conversations around what these like these are at the end of the day pdp is also a set of principles right but how it's operationalized and how it's translated into product design what changes will go into the ui ux will be sort of a mixture of legal technical experts sort of coming together and figuring out maybe through codes of practice what that looks like so this codes of practice concept is uh, recognized under the pdp bill also saying that the regulator will issue these codes so these could be in the form of like just the industry coming together and deciding that say this is what consent should look like on a ui on the app itself or say a payments app this is what it should look like i mean it's it's hard to anticipate or envisage the kind of granularity this can go into it could be n number of products but but just sort of uh, you know throwing out a few themes there um and yeah i i do see a lot of sort of privacy engineers also cropping up people who can actually understand the principles and then implement those in the tech design tech architecture part of it um so because um I, i also understand at the end of the day like from from a legal lens often we say that um we can say ha- do data classification do this inventorization process but that can be a fairly involved process that involves back and forth between a bunch of teams and actually doing these those interviews discovering where all your data resides in different um, work workflows like that in itself can be a fairly challenging process so maybe these like there will be a crop of privacy engineers who who can who understand the law but can then implement it at the back end and you know uh, translate that can sort of bridge that gap um there's there's also sort of um you know there's this concept of consent managers which we we uh, under the under the bill itself uh, which is uh, entities that will uh, assist sort of that lack as a facilitator between a user and and say the data fiduciary or the business itself which can show you maybe this will be in the form of a dashboard so that it becomes easier for users to also understand who uh, what where all have they given their consent uh, so people who can design those sort of products as well uh, and just people who can design these privacy compliance tools 
there are uh, Shivangi can of course speak about this a lot more because they've worked with these two. But sort of you know just understanding uh, again this this workflow, identifying where all your data resides, or or just uh, uh, a bunch of stuff around that. Even of course the lawyer, we 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 also do a bunch of this stuff, sort of marrying that uh, law with the tech design part. But actually then implementing it will require you know that engineering uh, folks to step in. I was going to ask, um, Shinidhi, do you foresee that at some point certification agencies will start to crop up? And um, I, I, you know, I'm thinking about that pillar of consent that you talked about earlier, right? Which is a country like India, which is uh, experiencing this geo broadband boom where everybody and their mother has access to a host of new services that they're signing up for willy nilly. What does PDP finally mean to them? I mean, how will they parse that information about what they're giving their consent to? So I guess this is, this is a question in two parts. One is, do you, do, do you foresee standardized certification? And two, any thoughts on how all of this is finally going to be made digestible to the layperson like me? Yeah, I, I do think, although, I mean, so like we have these parallel certification regimes for uh, security, like your ISO 27001, there are certain privacy uh, certifications as well. Say the DSCI has come up with, and in the US, there's been one NIST framework uh, for privacy management. Uh, there could be these certification bodies also that crop up. Under the PDP bill itself, there are auditors that are uh, to be designated, and they may conduct data audits and sort of sign off that at least this bunch of these processes are in, are in order. Uh, so that that could be something. There is also this concept of a trust score under the bill itself. So maybe you know assigning agencies can develop which which say that this is an organization that has a privacy score of seven out of ten, which is somewhat more digestible to an average user perhaps than you know a complex delineation of this is what the privacy policy says. Sort of an independent body coming in and saying that. Here, here we, we've done our uh, sort of audit and here's where they stand on these different parameters. Uh, maybe maybe that, that's something that can be, uh, 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 that, that might crop up as well. Uh, but, but yeah, I think these are all sort of nascent conversations still. We, yeah. we don't have uh, a lot of thinking or a lot of organizations that are, that are building these uh, certifications or even these sort of compliance, uh, you know, these trust core type, type, type businesses. Uh, so yeah, yeah see how this plays out actually in the next coming months. No, but you know what, when you say that this is nascent, um, I, I mean, I, I strongly feel like if it doesn't hit puberty soon, we may not have the luxury of the two year window that uh, GDPR afforded everybody, especially, especially for two reasons. One is if one of the drivers is, um, well, I, I can see three drivers anyway. One is the greater good of the consumer, right? If you want to catch up uh, two years, when everybody else has already implemented this or, or, or moved forward, two years might be a luxury. GDPR being the, the forerunner, they might have taken some time to figure things out. Two is if we want to compete on the global stage with other, other countries, if we want to be able to offer our services on equal footing to other countries, we may want to do this really fast. Um, and three is, and this part might be a little bit uh, controversial, is the other aspect of PDP where the government can potentially um, quickly up lega uh, what data they feel uh, under some variant of the Patriot Act, right? So for all of these reasons, we may not have luxury of, uh, of companies taking their time, like these conversations that it, it, it seems to me like they need to accelerate. So to that end, I want to ask uh, Shivangi, whether- There's an audience question. Okay. You, uh, to the next one. So there's, there is an interesting couple of questions from Srinivasan. Um, uh, which is all around how institutions develop. Mm -hmm. So the first one is uh, intra-organization institutions. Mm -hmm. So this uh, Srinivasan is asking, you know, once we start uh, taking privacy into account, and if you are conscious, um, a lot of uh, folks in the companies are going to ask questions about the purpose and about uh, the methods. Um, how do how do organizations how do these institutions, right? Is there a review board that to which you can go or uh, uh, how do they resolve these kinds of internal uh, conflicts? 
And the second one uh, he asked is around external institutions, which is that uh, this trust scoring institutions or whether it is the uh, DPIA and, and so on, um, uh, the uh, agencies, how do, uh, how do these develop over a period of time? What should people expect to see? Yeah, I can address uh, definitely the first one. Um, so if you see parallels in, you know, how security programs have developed or even IT programs have developed, a lot of mature organizations tend to have governance committees, you know, uh, at the top, which are typically cross-functional uh, leaders from cross-functional teams who are, uh, who, who form like the board for that. And I would expect that even privacy is something which will typically rest with one of these, uh, you know, existing committees or new committees will get formed like a governance kind of framework. So governance is something which as organizations mature, typically set up for all programs. And similarly, it will happen for privacy. So I don't uh, see, foresee as that as a major challenge, you know, it's, and there are, there are playbooks available for this, which one needs to follow. Uh, external, uh, definitely there will be uh, things are growing and especially in the Indian uh, context, I think it will take a little time to mature, but it ties back in with what uh, Indrayuth brought up, which is about certification uh, bodies and, you know, ecosystems around certification, uh, maybe at a different uh, level. Of, and it's very closely merged, you know, interlinked with what is happening globally, right? We're not in a silo. So um, I, I'm sure we will figure things out along the way. Um, it, the good news is that many people, uh, there is uh, there is structure in even the law that is accommodating for some of these challenges, right? So right from, uh, you know, not just the regulator, but they made, uh, you know, Srinidhi touched upon this whole issue of uh, setting up codes of practice, having, uh, you know, sort of governance at the industry level, along with the whole certification mechanisms, checks and balances will emerge. Uh, that's what is my anticipation. Like in any other industry. Srinidhi, so any thoughts on uh, staffing of the this uh, regulatory bodies? Yeah. Uh, and how yeah, no, setting up the regulator will be definitely, I mean, a challenging administrative task because, I mean, data is such a routine business activity that if, if because the regulator also has the uh, scope of hearing complaints. So there you may need to set up one in each state or, you know, different different bodies at, at different multiple levels. Uh, that, that that will definitely be something, I mean, that, that will be a big area of uh, focus, I think, just setting up that architecture uh, for, for complaints redressal uh, more than anything else, if, if that is the idea. So maybe something along the lines of the consumer forums as well, uh, consumer dispute redressal uh, mechanisms. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, just some... so let me ask this question. Um, Shivangi, earlier you talked about uh, some companies coming to you in emergency mode. Uh, let's assume for the for the sake of this hypothetical that uh, somebody's heard our, our little talk and uh, there's a fire now that's starting to burn under their feet or any other. Um, and where should they start? Where, if you had to advise them, where would you advise them to start looking? What are the low-hanging fruits that they should start with? What are the milestones that they should look at? Um, how would you advise them to do the steps forward, basically? Uh, yeah, I always, uh, I mean, we always at Arka advise people to start small and start with the data, right? So start with what personal data you're dealing with, get an understanding of that, because that's the crux, right? Un unless you have a view of what is what is the personal data you're dealing with, what types, what, how is it coming into your system? Where is it flowing out? Is it crossing borders? What is it being used for? You know, uh, what are the applications it resides on? How does it flow around? Until you build that view, you are never going to be able to then figure out what needs to be done with it, right? So first build that view and then do, and don't try to build it for the whole organization. Always say pick a small um, business unit or process or team or geography, what have you, whatever makes sense. Do it end to end for that. Try and implement, you know, the privacy elements on top of it. In the process, everybody in the organization comes up to speed. And then, you know, the subsequent sort of scaling up across becomes a lot easier. 
and you know everybody knows what needs to be done as they go along instead of so you know a, a term frequently used is don't try to churn the ocean um because it's not a problem that you can solve overnight so it's best to accept the fact and accept the reality and do it in a structured manner down the line once this becomes a law um how much do you think uh the interpretation of penalties will be based on intent the showing of intent to do to do good versus actual breaches where they are not able to comply i think that's a question for shrinidhi yeah uh no i'm happy to take a stab at that um i think overall the tone and tenor of the bill is also like i said it does seem to be based on principles so the ability to show that processing is fair the ability to show that you have a privacy by design approach a lot of that is uh actually i mean being able to demonstrate that privacy is a factor in your decision making or in your risk matrix uh it's just another business risk perhaps you know like all the other business risks that you that you might factor in while making any product or business related decision uh but 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 kind of embedding that um uh in in your systems uh will will put you in a better on a probably stronger footing when it comes to actually uh like the core of it seems to be accountability so you having that sort of uh taking on that onus of having these conversations having your data mapped out uh having those records to show that you know we've taken consent for this particular piece or or having regular audits done or just those sanity exercises of of making sure that uh internally also once a particular process is over we look at what data we have and we will delete extraneous stuff from our systems um all of that will actually also you know bring down your risk of uh, an attack at some point of time or or a hack um, of course i i don't want to conflate uh, privacy and security here but but just i mean breaches and and hacks seem to be something that most people are familiar with and you know there there is a lot of conflation between privacy and security when it comes to that uh but but just just in terms of um uh if you if you have all of those processes if you're able to demonstrate those records it definitely i mean in investigations or if anything does come up if there is a complaint against you that does put you at a stronger uh does give you somewhat of a stronger basis to make your case hmm. because at the end of the day i mean i was also i mean uh, you know stuff like data processing should be fair uh there are n number of ways to interpret that as well but but your interpretation should also take into account perhaps the kind of data that you're processing or uh, the sensitivity mm-hmm. of the data for instance if you process and hold a lot of biometric data uh, which is sensitive mm-hmm. under the bill uh then there may be increased obligations on you or or, or just just the amount of thought that you given to privacy will be a little more than if you're just processing say only device identifiers and nothing nothing else which is personal so Absolutely. like there also stuff to be uh, looked at in all of what you've said actually that both of you have said one of the the aspects that seems to strike me is um it is it is almost imperative that the business know b- beforehand the bis- the the use cases that they that they're going to gun for meaning uh you collect only that much amount of data you really define what your the minimum amount of data you collect you enrich and you store are uh, but so much of the competitive edge is when you look for patterns when you look for newer opportunities that may not have been uh possible right at the very outset uh, by which time according to the some of the tenets of pdp you might have deleted the data or you might not have sought consent explicit consent for newer business cases is this is is there a way around this are there any provisions to help with this um uh, there is this concept of a sandbox i don't know if the sandbox concept can be used in the you know to uh, to deal with the problem that you just uh, articulated shrinidhi would you be able to better uh, sort of articulate that? um yeah sure so uh, there th- there is that concept of a sandbox but but i'm not entirely sure how useful uh how how relevant or useful that would be but but that does give businesses which enter into or agree to participate in this sandbox will uh will be exempt from purpose limitation i believe if i'm not wrong yeah i think it is purpose limitation which is sort of i mean purpose specification world over there's been some conversation around is it completely at odds with this whole concept of big data analytics 
uh, because like we've been discussing, you know, as you go deeper, there are different use cases that you discover. So what do you do if at the outset you hadn't clarified that to a user from whom you've taken this data? Um, so perhaps that sandbox is is something, but that that will not be available to everyone. Like it will only be available to those businesses that have uh, gotten their privacy by design policy certified and are agreeing to participate in that sandbox. And that's also time capped. So it will not be endless. Uh, just on, I think one concern that a lot of people have also flagged is uh, that consent seems to be the cornerstone of this law as opposed to the GDPR, which has other other legal bases also. Uh, so, so just going back to an individual for a fresh consent sometimes is extremely, I mean, onerous. It adds friction to the process, uh, which a lot of, you know, uh, product teams can vouch for. Like just asking that might lead to consumer drop-off as well. Um, under the GDPR, there is this concept of legitimate interest. Mm -hmm. So if you're processing data for legitimate interest, of course, you still have to show all other principles are complied with, but you don't need consent then as the primary ground. Uh, under the PDP, there is some some sort of uh, reconstruction of that in the reasonable purposes ground. So stuff like fraud prevention or or credit scoring, uh, network information. Like if you're if you're if you're processing for these purposes, you might not always need consent. You can fall back on that reasonable purposes option. And I'm wondering if that is something that can be and the regulator can add to these purposes. So I just wonder if that's something that can be explored as well because you don't want to stunt or stifle innovation. That makes sense. And if you have some lassitude in how broadly you can define that purpose, meaning today you have some sense of what that purpose is and tomorrow, I mean, PDP itself is, is fairly broad, right? When you say that there are these bases. So imagine if somebody said that I want to be able to offer better products to my end customers. I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out how much of this is, is, is going to be between lawyers on two sides versus how much is going to be, how much is going to fall on data science teams. And it sounds to me like that is going to be an evolving discussion. So we have one question from Suchana. Um, uh, how would the law treat uh, synthetic data? Do the uh, purpose limitations uh, or concerned or any of those things are uh, if we just make up data, right? For our modeling, testing, this and that. I can take a stab at that. <laughs> with all my legal, with all my legal expertise, I can say that I think that because this, there's no personal data involved, I don't think that there should be any. Uh, okay, yes, that's right. yeah. I mean, if it has to, if for example, there could be a slight overlap in the sense that uh, let's say it reflects the distribution of the people in the real world, and that itself is biased, right? Uh, I, oh, Venkata, you make a very good point because I think this leads into this other fire that is now burning, which is about NPD. And I would love it. And if uh, either of you could speak about this, this fire, this storm that's coming, where my broad understanding is that a lot of data that is not at the granular level of being personal, things that are that may be either clustered or not necessarily to do with individuals are now soon going to be on the open market to even out playing fields. Can, can either oh of you just... God. And on, yeah, no, if either of you can just speak a little bit about this fire that is in the offing. Uh, yeah, I can, that's a whole other can of worms, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but so data, which is, I mean, there can be broadly two categories of data, I guess, identifiable and non-personal data. And, and there's this, uh, a government committee has come up with certain proposals to facilitate or encourage this sort of, uh, non-personal data sharing. So there'll be a new law, which will be proposed for non-personal data. There'll be a new regulator for non-personal data as well. And just to give you a sense of what non-personal data is, like there are different classifications that they make that raw data and process data, which is like insights um, and just raw data, which is a raw data set, but it's anonymized. Uh, so any anonymized aggregated data that you hold, say if it's a, if it's a food delivery app and, and it, it has aggregated personal data of everyone and it masks those identifiers and it's just sort of anonymized data in that sense. That, that data set then should be freely shareable uh, for in, with, to anyone on request. Um, and, and there's a whole bunch of nuance there on who this is applicable to. It says that there'll be data businesses that can be registered with the authority. These data businesses are determined on the basis of volume of how much data you process. Um, and, and then you have to make your, you have to have these metadata sort of directories where you, there'll be a directory where you say, this is all the data that I, 
process which will be available on an open access basis to everyone so another startup or anyone essentially even a competitor could look at that and request you for that underlying data set um and if it's raw in the sense that you haven't added any value to it uh you may be obliged or required under that law to share it so it's a it's a framework for sharing of that data which is historically thought of as you know business data and and th- this is i believe this is sort of unprecedented in some sense because across the world we are very familiar with personal data especially because of gdpr and you know all the other data protection regimes but non personal data is a somewhat new animal uh, so far is it fair to say that if and i i'll stand try and stay brief about npd but about as far as non personal data goes if this open market for all non personal data uh, actually takes effect then uh, the biggest uh, players the ones that have all of uh, you know large volumes of this data if they have to give that away um, the asset is no longer the raw data that they hold the amount of data that they hold it is now their ability to enrich that data and do something with the processing of that data and whoever in a particular domain is able to do this more accurately in a more targeted and and domain specific fashion they're going to sort of uh, take the lead there yeah. i think yeah i think you I guess that's agreement to the rationale that that like that that does seem to be a recurring theme across the report as well on like that's the underlying idea but of course it has it doesn't um there are a bunch of i guess problems with it just in terms of you know overlapping regulators because the competition commission of india is sort of that that's their mandate as well on addressing exactly what you said of of you know these big businesses or or that have access to large volumes of data uh fair market competition all of that is its remit so new regulator then what is exactly the regulator's role all of these are open questions right now to speak in to communicate in the language that uh, my community understands uh, data is not a moat anymore right your data is available potentially uh, because of the npd law to your competitors so it is the strength of the modeling and the enrichment that uh, is the that is going to be your value add or your the product advantage yeah absolutely and you were uh, i wanted to come back to one part which is the the career implications which a lot of uh, the audience of this uh, meetup is interested in you mentioned about uh, privacy engineers you mentioned about um, uh, program management privacy program management individuals uh, any other uh, designations or functions uh, uh, you see coming you know, within the organization touching data at some level um i can just start off with auditors as well or data mm-hmm. auditors and this will be a legally required so legally envisaged structure because the bill talks about data auditors being registered with the authority so that would be another uh, piece um, this will not be model auditors right we are not talking model auditors we are just talking about uh, data auditors yeah. okay yeah mm-hmm. yeah and i think in anything involving fairness uh, or other aspects uh, of the data are you targeting particular communities or algorithmic fairness accountability a- any other uh, dimensions you see coming yeah i mean plenty right from you know the whole thing about algorithmic biases being built in uh, that's opening up a whole can of worms uh, there is uh, the whole issue about how do you manage uh the life cycle of the data itself you know retention and the regulatory sort of impact on it so for example uh, let me give you an example if you just take employee data as a data set right um it has uh, financial data it has health data it has data to do with let's say pf in india and you know it has your uh, identity it has all kinds of data right each of that you know so there are multiple regulators under which each data set falls and so a uh, while a privacy law says something like you know you d- d- will delete data that is no longer required but every regulator has a different sort of norm and it's different in different countries so now if you have to uh, somebody invokes a right 
of saying you know right to erasure or the organization has to implement this right to uh, you know delete data uh, i mean uh, erase data after if it is no longer required it has to be done kept in uh, keeping in mind all of this uh, thing uh, you know uh, requirements which is a huge thing by itself because it's not something which can be done overnight because people do haven't done that mapping now as a data scientist you have to take two steps back and say i need to build this into my design because you know today i am present in xyz countries tomorrow i'm going to add 10 more countries and i can't go back and tell my business that hey i have to go and completely rearchitect my model so you know stuff like this will emerge and uh, therefore privacy by design becomes so important because you kind of need to decouple the law and compliance with the law from the design itself and design for long term and design to accommodate the variances of the law yeah. do you see sriniti from the tech go ahead uh, no i just had a thought on this fairness and sort of algorithmic accountability um so one of the i mean so there's this right to explanation under the european data protection law where you have to tell people the logic behind decisions they haven't imported that in the pdp as yet at least uh having said that there is still some sort of element of fairness like there is one principle which says that data should be processed in a fair and reasonable manner uh we we i mean distilling that into actual practice i'm not sure how that will be interpreted there's also data protection impact assessment so there may be an element of fairness there but i think this concept of conversation around algorithmic explainability is also happening in different different parts of the government as well like niti aayog recently came out with one a working document which which calls for you know public auditability of certain ai systems ethical committees to be set up for any ai using organization so outside of the data regime also there might be more developments around this front no good stuff we have about 4 uh, minutes so i would uh, like to ask both of you um for our audience today comprising number of different data science professionals as well as folks that have sort of a pnl responsibility for data science initiatives if you could leave them with one or two takeaways uh does anything come to mind sort of primarily to mind i would say that uh your jobs have gotten far more interesting than uh, <laughs> it has introduced uh, men uh, you know completely new parameters um so i would look at this as an huge opportunity because uh, you know it is something which has added dimensions which enriches the whole thing and uh, i also feel that as individuals we don't often get to see uh, too many paradigm shifts in uh you know while we are working right i mean this yeah. is something which is happening at a at a rapid space place so uh yeah. it's nice to, it's you know so it makes sense to look at it positively look at it as uh you know opportunities and sort of ride that way because uh in a way if you step back and look at this from a holistic perspective um you realize this is like almost like an opportunity for complete creative destruction you know of uh, what we are doing and we look at things afresh um so i mean that's that's all that i can say and uh, you know learn to live yeah. with ambiguity wonderful yeah, yeah. that that's such a nice thought i almost don't want to add to that because it just i mean i i think i echo that sentiment if you look at it from a purely legal compliance lens you might be missing out on a lot of the fun that you might actually have with product design when it comes to sort of embedding privacy into the a uh, system so yeah i think i i echo that sentiment on the interesting times ahead i'd like to add something and then you guys can tell me if if i'm uh if i'm not 100% right there there is no more qu- a question of if it will come it is a question of when it will come there may be nuance that and a little bit of tweaking this way and that way but it's a matter only a matter of time and uh the penalties that will accompany it those will be significant the reputational risks that will accompany not being able to comply with this those will start to be significant so the number of excuses behind which a company can risk deprioritizing their efforts those are reducing fair yeah definitely definitely something that this is going to happen like this is no no longer sort of up for discussion definitely there'll be a data protection law sooner rather than later and yeah significant penalties and a whole new architecture so yeah wonderful i i 
sorry venkata please i didn't and the right thing to do to right thing to yes uh, yes being responsible with your data and your customers data is is a good thing yeah absolutely so uh, to all of our uh, listeners today thank you for joining us and i think that uh, both shrinidhi and shivangi have given you the tip of the iceberg there is the part of the intent was to sound the alarm bell um in terms of specific questions that you might have uh, both of them are reachable at uh, you, well you can you can leave comments here and we'd be happy to reach them back to them but shrinidhi is with ikigai law and shivangi is with arka arka spelled with two r's a r r k a um so please feel free to reach out to them um shrinidhi and shivangi if twitter is an option for you do you want to just quickly announce your handles please or you can see our latest announcement we have copied uh, both uh, the sure files. but in case they don't have access to the announcement very quickly shivangi what's your twitter handle minus shivangi nadkarn without the i at the end so all right e n g i n a d k a r n all right uh, minus trinidhi v s got it Two thank thoughts. you very much okay sorry i was about to close but go ahead venkata what are your thoughts so uh, two thoughts first of all um, we will be doing a deep dive uh, in the next session on uh, tally's uh, approach to uh, very privacy conscious modeling approach we will have their uh, data scientists come and tell us uh, uh, what approach uh, tally took uh, when dealing with uh, the country wide uh, pretty much every small uh, enterprises data so that that should be very exciting and we expect uh, to have uh, on this uh, particular forum we expect to have more conversations around uh, um, what the law means as far as the day to day practices are concerned so we will there will be lot more discussion around tools and uh, uh, techniques uh, approaches codes of um, codes that uh, shrinidhi talked about uh, just stay tuned on this forum wonderful and uh, also to all of our listeners um all of these sessions that we've been having are accessible uh, on the hasgeek website under their fifth elephant series of talks uh, so please be sure to check those out and with that i'll thank both shrinidhi and shivangi for having joined us today thank you so very much i look forward to continuing this conversation especially uh, on uh, the the npd aspects of this the non personal data thank you so much once again thank you thank you for thank calling you. thank you so much for doing this thank you take care bye bye Bye.